resources professional. He's a keynote speaker, a corporate trainer, and personal leadership coach, and he's been featured, right, for the industry and speaking conferences across the Southeast United States. Today, Tim is going to share with us the most important thing. Please welcome Tim Sparks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Great to be here. The most important thing. Are you intrigued? Yes? yes? Me too. I can't wait to hear what I'm going to say. It's going to be awesome. Um, so if we were talking about the, the most important thing in life, we would talk about things like love or family, God, happiness. But quite frankly, I, I don't think I'm qualified to tell you what the most important thing in life is. I can tell you what it is for me, but I can't tell you what it is for you. So today, we're talking about the most important thing for your business. As CEOs, as business leaders, as entrepreneurs, as HR professionals here today, if I were to ask you, what's the one thing, what is that one key foundational principle that your success, the, uh, the success of your business hinges upon, what would you say? Now, don't say anything out loud. Just think about that for a second. Okay, time's up. If you said culture, you would be 100% correct. If you said something different, then it's probably a good thing you're here today. Okay? So what is corporate culture and why is it so important? So let me give you a textbook definition. Company culture or corporate culture is the values, ideals, attitudes, and goals that characterize any organization. All right? Let me say that one more time. It is the values, ideals, attitudes, and goals that characterize your organization. Someone put it a little more succinctly. They said, corporate culture is the way we do things around here. Okay? So that's a little more easily understood. It's the way your people act and behave on a daily basis, regardless of what's in your policy manual, what's in your employee handbook, and what's engraved on a plaque in your lobby. Okay? Corporate culture is how your people act every day, regardless of all of that. And let me illustrate that by the tale of two companies. Okay? You've got company A and you've got company B. Company A is a manufacturing company, a global manufacturing company that does $20 billion a year in sales. Company B was an energy company, notice I said was, right, was an energy company that provided energy services for the west coast of the U.S. Company A, their core values were integrity, respect, accountability, and excellence. Company B, integrity, respect, communication, and excellence. Almost identical, right? Three out of the four were exactly the same, and both sets of core values were great values, right? Except for company A, a company by the name of Westrock, has been on the Forbes list of most admired companies every year since their inception. They're highly respected, highly sought after, highly uh, uh, integrity, uh, all of that. Company B was Enron. Does that name ring a bell? It should. Enron was uh, a company that was probably embroiled in one of the biggest controversies of the 20th century. They were a horrible people, or horrible company run by horrible people. Integrity? Forget it. They lied about their books. They had a uh, false, they falsified their accounting practices to make it look like they were uh, creating a profit, right? And they did that so that investors would come and invest their money in that company, and investors lost to the tune of billions of dollars. They were a terrible company, and I could go on and on. Okay? Company A, Westrock, they lived their values. Their values were their guiding principles, and even today, they continue to live those values. Company B, they don't even exist anymore. 
because they didn't live their values. And you see, culture is a big part of that. I believe culture drives everything else we do as an organization. Culture is the most important thing that will either uh, create success for your organization or cause you to end up like Enron and cease to exist. Culture is so important that Peter Drucker famously said, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Right? Remember that? What did he mean? I believe he meant you can have the best strategy in the world. You can have the smartest people on the planet creating strategy for you. But if you don't have the right people and the right culture driving that strategy, it's just words on a piece of paper. You see, culture, when done right, is all about unification. Culture brings people together under a common goal and a common purpose. And that's what we need. Culture is so critical. And culture drives, really, like I said, everything else we do in business, but culture drives uh, many uh, important things. First of all, culture drives employee engagement, right? And culture drives your employee engagement. Why is employee engagement so important? Well, the corporate executive board about nine years ago did a study and they found that for every 1% decrease in employee engagement in your company costs you $6.5 million for every billion dollars of revenue that you do. So you don't have to be a rocket science or a financial genius to figure out that that's a lot of money, right? Take that company A, Westrock, they're a $20 billion a year organization. A 1% decrease in employee engagement cost them $130 million right off their bottom line. That's a lot of money. So it drives things like engagement. Um, another survey, another study said that companies that have a great high energy or high uh, culture, a good culture in their organization, have employee engagement scores that are 72% higher than those that don't. So right now you should be thinking dollar signs. That's a lot of money, 72% higher employee engagement for, every, uh, for the companies that have a great culture. And Gallup does a, a really interesting uh, survey every year. It's called State of the American Workforce, and it's all revolved around um, uh, employee engagement. And what they've found for over a decade now is that American companies have an engagement score of about 30%. In other words, only about three in 10 of your employees are engaged in what you're doing. That means seven out of 10 are either disengaged or they're actively disengaged. If they're disengaged, that means they're just coming to work, they're punching the time clock, they're doing their thing, doing the least amount of work possible, just enough to fly under the radar and not get in trouble, but not any more than that, and they're really adding nothing to your organization. If they're actively disengaged, that means they're actively trying to sabotage your organization. Tell me if this sounds familiar. You hire a new employee. See, things seem to be going great, they're doing well, and then all of a sudden, a day later, a week later, a month later, poof, they're gone. What happened to them? Well, come to find out that somebody in your organization cornered them in the break room and said, you know what, you're going to hate working here. It's a terrible organization. They're going to treat you like a rented mule. You're never going to get a promotion. You're never going to get a raise. It's just terrible. The work conditions are terrible. Your bosses don't care about you. Sound familiar? It happens more times than you would think. Those are your actively disengaged people. Culture, if you have a great company culture, culture will take care of those issues. Culture will drive your employee engagement so that you have a, an, an engaged workforce that's actually adding to the bottom line of your organization. Culture also drives things like recruitment and retention. How many of you have tried to hire somebody this year? Yeah, it's a lot of fun, isn't it? You know, it used to be that trying to find top talent was a real challenge. Now, Trying to find anybody that has a pulse is a real challenge, right? 
It's hard to, to hire people. Nobody wants to work. And if your engage, or if, excuse me, if your culture is not a high culture, it's not a great culture, you're putting yourself behind the eight ball in recruitment. Because if those few that do want to work are going out into the workforce to look for a job, they're going to seek out those companies that have a great reputation. They're going to seek out those companies that have a great culture, and it's going to be much more easily, uh, they're going to be much more easily retained. And then thirdly, culture drives your company's brand. It drives your company's brand. Your brand is how the rest of the world sees your company. Okay? And again, your brand is critical to a lot of different things, but culture drives your brand. So, how do you as leaders, how do you as entrepreneurs, how do you impact, how do you help shape your culture and your organization? Well, just a couple of quick things. Number one, lead by example. And that sounds so cliche and it sounds so, you know, I've heard this before kind of thing, but it's so critical that you lead your organization by example. So for example, if you want a culture, uh, a high performing culture in your organization, then you need to reward people that are high performing individuals and not, you know, have this participation trophy kind of mentality that we seem to be stuck in today. You need to reward the people that are doing the work that you want them to do. And number two, you need to be willing to hold people accountable. You see, so many times I've heard CEOs say things like, you know, in, in having conversations with business leaders and CEOs, they'll talk about their people and they'll say, yeah, Steve over there, you know, Steve's our best salesman, he does great, but he's really kind of a jerk. No offense, Steve. Right? Have you heard people talk about their employees like that? Steve's a great performer. He's our top salesman, but he's really kind of a jerk. Everybody hates him. You know, nobody likes him. So we just kind of put up with his shenanigans because he's a good salesperson. And inside, I'm screaming, no, don't put up with that. Because I don't care how good of a salesperson Steve is. If Steve is the jerk that you think he is, he's costing you far more off your bottom line than he's producing in sales. I guarantee it. You need to be holding people accountable. I was reading an article the other day in uh, Harvard Business Review, and I came across a quote that's just perfect. The author said, the culture in your organization is shaped by the worst behavior the leader is willing to tolerate. Isn't that good? It's shaped by the, the worst behavior that the leader is willing to tolerate. And if you're willing to tolerate your top salesman being a jerk and being hated by everybody, then you get exactly what you deserve. If you're willing to hold people accountable, and you know, we're, we're in this kind of day and age where we talk about being compassionate. You know, well, I don't want to fire anybody because the, the job market's hard and I just don't want to, you know, uh, have have to look somebody in the eye and say, you know, you don't have a job anymore. Sometimes the most compassionate thing you can do is cut people loose. I lovingly refer to it as promote them to customer. <laughs> right? Because if they're not happy, if, they're, if they don't fit your company culture, they're miserable. And you're not doing them any favors by keeping them in your organization. You're not doing yourself any favors, for sure, and you're not doing them any favors either. If you let them move on, that gives them an opportunity to find the perfect culture that's a good fit for them. So you need to figure out what your culture, what you want your organizational culture to be. So as we close, I want you to think of your organization. Think of your organization and think about the perfect culture. If you could have the culture be anything you want it to be, what would that perfect culture be? And then answer two questions. Number one, are we there? Is my company there? And if you can answer yes to that question, bravo, that's great. But if you can't, if you have to say no to that question, then you've got some work to do. The second question is, what are you as the leader willing to do to get your company where it needs to be? You have to make that decision. 
the most important thing in your organization is your company culture. I'm Tim Sparks. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>